Chris, what brings you down today? Well, I've come here to join like the rest of the residents of Crawley and other people across the country to fight fascism and to say that in this town and across the country, we will not accept that behaviour and we are better together than divided. What brings you out today? Uh, so I to come out and um, stand up for uh, migrants who have come over to this country against fascist thugs. So I'm here as a Socialist Party member and a teacher and an NEU rep um, to oppose the fascism that we've seen across the country in the past week um, and to show that the organised working class, um, there's more of us than there are of the fascists and that we're able to really mobilise together to fight back. Well, I'm a trade unionist. I'm a member of Unite uh, Migrant Workers Branch. And um, what brings me out today is the working class solidarity to oppose the far right, driving them out of our streets, combating the far right, um, but also to put forward a programme about how can we actually make it harder for the far right uh, to make inroads into our communities. Being a, a third generation Crawley born uh, migrant, uh, with five generations of my family in my local town, uh, I just thought it was really important to get out here and just show that we're standing up against racism and, and just how welcome people are and not to blame the weakest people of our society for the biggest problems that are caused by some of the most powerful and richest people in our society. The unity that we've seen over the last few days, the people that come down to Brighton, Wolverhampton, it just uh, brings you know hope and inspires you. It sees that there is good in society. And there's so many different people from backgrounds, all different backgrounds, different colours, all, you know, uh, for the sake of peace and for, the, you know, working against fascism, against racism. It feels really important to be a witness here and to stand here and support the refugees who are living in this hotel here. What do you think of the violence that's hit England in recent weeks? Oh, it's awful, really sad. I mean, again, somebody who doesn't know any other place to call home. It's really questioning, you know, where, how, you've, how you belong. I mean, my grandfather came after the war, like most people in the Second World War, it was their grandfathers that fought in that war, um, to feel that they took part in it and were welcome to here after centuries of, of, of supporting this nation, to then feel that you don't feel part of it is, 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 is criminal, especially the fact that we were blamed for something, a crime that wasn't ours. It wasn't a Muslim who did it. It wasn't somebody who was even from the country. It was somebody who was British-born, somebody who was here who clearly had issues to take out on young children. We are also fathers. We also have family members. We don't want any of this to happen within our nation and in our own local communities. When I heard about um, the one uh, where they tried to burn down the people in the holiday inn and blocking the fire exits, um, I mean, it's just absolutely disgusting. I think it's awful that they've been called protests. Uh, clearly, this is an act of terrorism. This is intent to kill. Um, and I think it's really important to come out here and show solidarity and show people that it won't be put up with. I think what it shows is that there is anger in society and there are you know, these far-right folks, hard call, um, hardened uh, races, trying to push for uh, divisions. So, no, it is appalling what you're seeing, the violence, the hatred that they are trying to... Uh, spread. But I think it's also an indication that people feel like nothing's going to change under the Starmer government. I think it's disgusting and I think that it's been perpetuated by the ruling class. Uh, the Tories have spent years and years uh, just facilitating all of this anti-migrant rhetoric and I don't think that it's a coincidence that within uh, a month of uh, Bibby Stockholm contract ending and the Rwanda deal being scrapped, we're seeing uh, ordinary people trying to mobilise uh, and creating far-right fascist groups uh, to finish the work that was started by the Tory government. It's been really frightening, but I think we have to hold on to the hope that we've seen with the interfaith work that's been going on, particularly in Middlesbrough and Hartlepool, where leaders of all faiths have been gathering together, showing solidarity, saying that we will not have this kind of fascist violence on our streets. And particularly as a vicar, I feel it's important to stand with my Muslim brothers and sisters, my siblings of other faiths, because Islamophobia is real and is out there and that these are Islamophobic protests. So I want to be there and show that Christians also will stand together again. As a lifelong Crawley resident, what do you think of the turnout today? I'm pleased, let's just say that. Um, Crawley doesn't have the strongest record in the Labour movement. So in one sense, this is a very good turnout. Having said that, we're very pleased to see that we have got people from London and Brighton. Here as well. As a person who uh, has certain privileges, like being white, um, that is actually my duty to stand up for our communities and, and especially there are, to show 
that together there are so many more of us than there are of the fascists. And, and if we face our fears, come together, organise within our trade unions, organise within our local communities, we really are able to outnumber these people, even though we feel scared. I think nothing, nothing good uh, comes without fear. And I think that we have to overcome that to really fight the, the oppressive measures that are being put out by the far right and also by our own government. We know from history that if we don't stand up against the fascists and actually physically oppose them, I don't mean go and batter them in one sense, but physically oppose them and get them off the streets like they did in the Cable Street in the 1930s, then we're not going to defeat fascism. So it's scary, but you have to do it. Obviously, we were a bit concerned, but we were hopeful that with the numbers that we would generate, it wouldn't be violent because the violence has come from our side. It's generally been from the far right the thuggery that's been happening up and down the country. And when there hasn't been any numbers, that's when the problems have, have occurred. As soon as I arrived, all my anxiety disappeared because this is a bunch of beautiful people who want peace. They want the anger to be directed at the right people, not at those who are seeking sanctuary. Uh, and there's a very clear narrative here that actually, if there is any fault to be argued about, it's the fault of the way in which we're governed uh, the, the the super wealthy and the massive wealth gap that there is. But the people here are basically saying, not in Crawley, we're not going to have this kind of hatred spewed and talked of and spread. In what do you think is that thing that's going to do, that's going to unite the working people? Um, this has united it, so you could say that. But in terms of consciousness, I believe that we're seeing... And we, we said it that before the general election that the Labour Party and the Labour government would attack us. That the, they, they actually said, as Rachel Reese has said, we are the natural, the Labour Party is the natural party of British business. So really the question of it being the uh, party for the working class, we believe, is gone. The very fact that only a few weeks into it, they already hit me as a pensioner and taking my uh, winter fuel allowance off. Anyone who needs care home um, and... There was a cap on the money you had to pay. That's been lifted. So, I mean, these sorts of things, perversely, will make people aware, actually, well, is the Labour Party the vehicle? And we're calling for a new workers' party. What you see behind me is what is the answer, really, that working-class people, local community, trade unions, will come together in a united fashion to oppose uh, these uh, d the divisions. If we don't come out, if we don't unite like this, you, you, everybody will be under the impression that the um, opinion that the fascists, the, the, the narrative that is being pushed through um, earlier on, even by some of the media, is that, um, you know, um, that there's so much racism in society that we're so divided. But reality is that we're not. This is the average person wants peace. They want they want love. They want, you know, cohesiveness. They want people to be simulated. So th this actually represents that view. What do we have to do as communities to organize and keep these people off our streets? I think we have to see the beginnings of that here, where people who wouldn't normally come out have come out to join in with groups who are, you know, have been embedded in anti-fascism for a long time. Uh, I think the people's realization that there is fascism in this country, that the far right do have the means and ways to mobilize, People will have had a good experience, I hope, and will then begin to think, how, when do we have to keep turning up? So I think the grassroots is where I put my hope. My hope is in the grassroots mobilising, not in government at the moment. If we had a more um, grassroots demo democratic system, then I think we would be able to address this more easily if we could change the way in which we have representation so that these people here are truly represented and are asked about their views, I'm talking about the anti-fascists, um, then I think we would be able to begin to build bridges across the divides that are there. There are divides and conversation is incredibly important. The pictures I've seen of faith leaders going out to speak to protesters, they're not protesters, to rioters, um, has been really more than heartwarming. That So we have to stop dehumanising each other. I think if I was going to say one thing, it would be that. We need fair, adequate housing for everybody. We need to renationalise our public services. We need nationalised rail. We need nationalised water. We need education systems that teach decolonised curriculums so that every child in this country knows 
that racism is not the answer and will never be the answer. And we need to share our cultures and learn about the horrors of the British Empire so that we don't have people taken to our streets trying so desperately to protect it when it's, it's caused nothing but just awful things for people across the world. And we need to take accountability for that, both on our streets and in our education system. And when we start with children, we're able to really mobilise and really teach people the difference between right and wrong and who the real enemy is, because it's the government always. Maybe this could be a start. Why do we have to be so just sort of responsive, you know, um, reactive to, to the far right coming out? There's, 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 all, there's good reason for this to continue up and down the country, right? If it's going to, you know, um, put differences aside and it's going to unite us, then we should be able to just carry on like this, you know?